Hello guys, Bing Yao here. Welcome to another episode of New Falmouth. And today's episode, we are going to be building a bridge or road connection across the river. In the previous episode, we built a rail bridge or a, um, a freight line rail bridge, swing bridge. Um, and today I want to extend the um, the city or start to extend the city across the other side of the river. And the first thing I decided to do really is just to lay down a kind of temporary road connection connecting to the freeways so that I can get the traffic to move across the bridge and basically get everything kind of working. Um, because this build that I'm doing is not a typical bridge and in fact you're probably thinking how am I going to fill 20 minutes an entire episode on a road bridge well that is a good question but <laughs> this build was <coughs> quite complex in fact what I'm going for here is a it's a, an opening bridge so the center portion lifts up to allow boats to go through a little bit like the railway bridge that I did in episode 3 which was a kind of horizontally swinging bridge this one is a vertically swinging bridge and it again it's based on a bridge that I've seen on Google Maps which is in fact in the same city as the swing bridge Portland in um, Maine and it's kind of based pretty much on that bridge the design of it but I was kind of trying to work out at this stage how to construct it because although I know or I knew you know how to what the it did the finished result what it would look like it was actually quite challenging to get to that position or get to that stage because what I needed to do was create a road or a, create a bridge that had an invisible portion in the middle and the reason for that is because I want to have the middle portion effectively opening or looking as if it opens but because the road still needs to kind of function as a road I decided to put some invisible roads onto the bridge the only problem with that is they don't appear to work very well as a bridge uh, and in fact the only invisible road I could get to work as a bridge was the single single lane um, invisible road which meant that I started to build the bridge using kind of single lanes diverging off a kind of um, dual lane or in fact it's three lanes in fact and I was getting in a complete mess to be honest with you and at this stage we're kind of like I'm just trying to work out how this kind of three lane bridge effectively then uses these two or what will become there we go two invisible lanes um, but the problem with that is you get the cars doing weird kind of curvy line as they go across across the bridge so that just didn't seem to be working for me um, and what I then decided to do what I actually found was that by converting another version of this bridge I managed to get a three lane uh, invisible bridge or the three lane invisible road working as a bridge so the long and short of it was I spent probably two hours trying to make something that actually worked as a bridge with a kind of hole in the middle of it like this and eventually I came up with the solution but I'm putting it I'm putting all this out here because although it's not pretty what I'm doing here at the moment I think it's important in a way to show because a lot of the time when you're doing these builds they do get very complicated and a lot of the time I don't bother showing that but I thought with this one I would show it because I think it's important to show how much of the, how much work you end up doing you don't necessarily show and you don't necessarily realize as a as a viewer how much work goes into something like this at the end of the day it's just a bridge it's just a road bridge that's all it is but what I wanted this to do um, 
in terms of the, the swing bridge characteristics of the bridge meant that I had to do it in a particular way and I had to get it to work in a particular way. And at this stage now, I've actually got it working to what I want it, how I want it to be. Don't look great at this stage. Um, and in fact, it, it looks pig ugly at the moment. And I've got all these other kind of road networks and these kind of temporary, you know, temporary buildings put down purely to get the um, to get the traffic flowing across the bridge. Um, so don't pay any attention to those buildings on the other side of the river there. That's purely so that I can get some traffic flow going over that bridge. Um, so yeah, kind of trying to explain my thought process for this for this build. Um, this is going to be one of the main crossing points for the river. I don't think it's the main entry point of the city. The main entry point will be on the kind of, I call it the mainland on the other side of the river. But ne nevertheless, it's still an important road connection. And the other thing is going to have a, um, a junction here, which will also be quite an important and quite a prominent road junction. So I wanted to make this road junction, which you're going to see in a minute being made, um, a little bit more of a kind of um, um, just a bit more of a kind of detailed junction a little bit more a little bit different to an average sort of road junction because it's going to be quite prominent so you can see here how it how it's kind of operating we've got these two sort of main roads joining onto this kind of dual um, dual lane bridge approach here um, and there was quite a lot of me mucking around with invisible roads at this stage as well although I ended up just laying down traditional roads because the invisible roads were causing too many kind of glitches and stuff with the um, with the landscape and everything um, but what I did do is then add a lot of decals onto the, um, the junction just to kind of give it a little bit more uh, realism and also to almost dif differentiate where the different lanes are um, and that was a question of just making sure that I was using where the traffic was turning and trying to put the um, lines where the traffic was so it looked as if the um, you know the lanes were kind of operating correctly there um, which I, they did I mean it does actually function as a, as, a, as a road junction I managed to sort of change the light the traffic light um, timings and stuff like that so there was quite a lot to this um, quite a lot to this junction uh, but again I've, I've edited this down significantly I'm just showing you some of the some of the sort of finishing off aspects of it um, but um, yeah, I kind of got a little bit carried away with this road junction probably wasn't planning to do quite as much work on this but um, because it is in quite a prominent position um, I felt that it was probably necessary to to do that just to get it into some sort of more kind of detailed state than usual but I'm not going to be spending this much time on every single road junction in the city because I'm going to be it's going to be impossible to finish if I do that but there we go Most of the roads in the city are not going to have arrows on them. I don't particularly like 
the vanilla sort of junctions with all the arrows and things but in this instance I thought it's probably quite sensible to put arrows there because it's not an easy junction I don't think for people to you know work out which way to or which lane to take so in this case the arrows actually do they do kind of work I think for this um, for this design so that's pretty much the uh, road connection junction on the uh, on this side done um, well, once I've got that done I've deleted everything else so at least it looks a little bit um, looks a little bit cleaner now the build and again this side just sort of tidying up tidying it all up and now back to the bridge so with this um, with the, the bridge now functioning as a bridge with an invisible three lane uh, road either side I could now work out you know I've got the nuts and bolts of it working so I could now work out how to um, give it the appearance of a uh, of a swing bridge and the design in question had these huge concrete kind of like buttress sections that support the uh, the road but also contain a lot of the kind of swinging mechanism or the the kind of big hinge mechanism which allows these um, the, the, the each side of the bridge to swing up so there'll be some kind of big counterbalance weight inside those concrete buttresses I would imagine that allows the uh, the, the swinging mechanism to to lift um, and because I had the invisible roads in the middle it meant the um, the road texture was kind of going white I think that's probably why so I've had to cover that up with some plobable asphalt um, which just makes life a little bit more complicated because then you've obviously got to put down the uh, the road markings and things like that but uh, you know it's all part of the fun of it um, I'm using these little drain sort of decals just to give it the appearance of the kind of grate in between where the, um, the swinging mechanism is and then also putting this kind of controlling booth because the, the, the bridge that I saw in Portland had a little kind of structure that sits projects out from the side of the bridge uh, would be where the control uh, control station is for the, the, the lifting of the, the bridge section in the middle um, and the only thing with that is you had some brickwork which I just covered up with some some concrete just plopping that in there um, so again PO a big uh, amount of PO on this build and uh, just sort of fill in all the sides and edit and this has been edited a lot though I'm not going to bore you with all these um, you know putting concrete on all sides uh, but at least just shows you the amount of work I've had to do with this with this build there is a lot um, a lot to this that I'm not showing just because it's pretty pretty repetitive um, and then this is one of the concrete um, barriers like a road barrier that I just thought I'd put in underneath so it looks like a kind of cantilever structure that supports the, the control station there um, and now the start of the actual swing or the swing section of the bridge uh, the lifting section and the first thing I did really was work out where the midpoint of the the bridge is and I'm using these rulers here just to, to gauge where the center is because it's quite tricky to to get that and I had to make sure that that was pretty much accurate because otherwise the other side when I come to mirror that is going to be uh, won't fit so I had to be quite careful that that was actually dead center or near enough dead center and then once that's in I could then construct or start to construct the kind of structure for the uh, lifting portion of the bridge So although this uh, this bridge is not going to be operational, what I do end up doing is um, layers again in PO. Uh, so I make one option for the bridge with the the, the road deck le layer level like this, and then I make a second option where the the road deck is um, has swung upwards. Uh, and because I'm using invisible roads, it doesn't mess up my um, it doesn't mess up my uh, my row connections or anything 
but it does mean that there's a little bit more um, a little bit more work involved because I can't just build the bridge as one. I have to almost make it as two bridges, and then hide the um, hide the appropriate layer. Now I think probably a lot of the time I'm just going to be using the, the the bridge when it's in the upright position for screenshots, things like that, which you will see at the end. I'm going to do some some cinematics at the end showing that, uh, but it's not going to be up probably for most of the uh, most of the time just because it's hard to get the traffic to work correctly I'd have to put some traffic lights in and then um, manually switch them to red in order to get the traffic to stop otherwise I'm going to get cars driving over the invisible gap there and uh, it's just going to look completely unrealistic so there's a few kind of logistics involved with when you're doing something like this but uh, for screenshots I think it's going to be fine um, but uh, I'm not going to be using the, the, the bridge in the upright position for most of the kind of cinematics just because of the traffic issues I think in the future um, so again just building up the structure really I mean all this stuff uh, you're not really going to see any of this when it's in its lower position but because it's going to be upright for a lot of the, the sort of screenshots and stuff I, I need to make sure it looks kind of pretty detailed the, the deck there um, because it's something you're, you're going to be looking at more so you're going to be probably looking at the detail of this more than you know the average sort of part of the build in the city let's say and things like these little railings and stuff that I can put in just helps to to give it that little bit more um, realism um, uh, but yeah I mean this this build is a uh, just a complete PO job I mean there's nothing here that's you know I'm not do I, I couldn't do any of this without PO um, so uh, if you're interested in knowing how I kind of go about especially the the, the last section we see on the cinematics when I put the the, the vertical um, deck in um, then I would be happy to do a maybe just a sub video or something just showing the the PO um, you know how to, how to go about using PO to make this uh, I haven't really gone into that much detail with with this video just because I think it's a little bit more sort of I don't know a bit more specialist maybe and I wanted to concentrate on kind of the, the, the bridge design and the build itself rather than the, the sort of PO aspects of it but the layers is a very um, very useful part of PO which as I say I've only really just discovered I discovered it previously in episode 3 when I made the swing bridge for the railway but in this episode I've gone even further into the layers um, and uh, anyway that's that's it <laughs> so anyway we're coming to the end of the episode thanks guys again for watching putting up with my commentary and um i shall bid you farewell and see you in episode five do hang around for the cinematics and see you next time cheers guys